What is going on, boys and girls? It's your man right here, the one and only Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders of the RCWR Show, coming at you with my review of D'Angelo's new album, which is titled D'Angelo and the Vanguard Black Messiah. That's the name of the album. Almost 15 years we have been waiting patiently for another D'Angelo album. I know a majority of my family, my friends, for sure me, all have been waiting patiently. I mean, a lot has happened just to follow up on the review that we gave for the Sugar Daddy track. And by the way, I appreciate everybody that had checked that out. As I know, probably that times out of 10, you same guys that checked that out are coming back for this. So definitely, I want to give a shout out to all of you that had checked out our single track review for the Sugar Daddy uh, single off the uh, Black Messiah album. Uh, but definitely a lot of us, including yours truly, have been waiting patiently for D'Angelo to put that third album out already. A lot has happened in the 15 years. Uh, says D'Angelo has somewhat been away, at least as far as a solo artist goes. And I just want to kind of make sure we stress that because even though, and this is the biggest misconception, I think, you know, that any hardcore D'Angelo fan would definitely say, yeah, Lee, you're absolutely right. D'Angelo may not have been working on his old music to release promptly over the years, but he has done many guest appearances on other people's albums. Q-Tip comes to mind. Uh, when it came to, uh, not the Renaissance, but the one before that, uh, I want to say Amplified was the album, uh, Raphael Sadiq, uh, just to name a few, but I mean, if you really go back and do your homework, you'd see that he's done some guest spots with many artists, he's collaborated with many artists over the years, it's just that as far as him making his own album of new material to follow up on the great work that he did with Brown Sugar and the critically acclaimed Voodoo album, it seemed like every single time we kept hearing little rumors that something was coming about, he was working on it, and it's kind of like, yeah, 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 whatever, we're never going to see this. And I mean, meantime, we saw Guns N' Roses come out like almost 14 years later with the Chinese Democracy album, even though that wasn't the original light up. We saw Sting and the Police get back together for a farewell tour. We saw Genesis get back together. Uh, for a farewell tour we saw led zeppelin get back together for just one night only we saw hell freeze over with the original members of black sabbath mine is geezer butler uh had got back together and they made a new album of studio material a lot of acts got back together fuji's lauren hill tried to put something out there a lot of people have come about over the years and Everything just kept, at one point, coming back to D'Angelo, just saying, man, the guy, he was at the top of his game when he got involved in the music scene, and he was just at his peak. Why didn't he continue to do that? And any true hardcore D'Angelo fan knows of some of the legal, personal drama that he's been dealing with over the years, so we don't really need to talk about that, because when it's all said and done, it's not as extreme as some of the stuff we've seen like with Chris Brown, Rihanna, and all that other silly crap. But 14 years in the making right here, I gotta tell you guys off the break, if you are a hardcore D'Angelo fan, you have that brown sugar, that voodoo album, especially you ladies out there, listen up. You all that's looking for that next D'Angelo album where you're gonna be able to kick back and make some sweet love, make some more babies uh, to his music, you're not really going to find that on this album. As a matter of fact, I hate to be brutally honest, that's not really present at all. Now, this album that's titled Black Messiah, some of you may kind of feel, oh, maybe D'Angelo is kind of dubbing himself as uh, as the Black Messiah. No, on, on the contrary, he is not uh, calling himself that. His whole mentality is everybody in themselves has their own black messiah that they need to find. And basically, they got to look within. And basically, it kind of plays off of not only the title, but a majority of the tracks. The timing of it is just really, really interesting because it almost kind of plays off of some of the racial racial prejudices that's going on in North America. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the... Uh, Eric Gardner situation in New York City, the results of that, 
uh, what came about in Ferguson, you know, more crimes, uh, racially uh, charged crimes, one could argue, uh, have happened uh, that uh, has a lot of people cry foul as they feel that uh, law enforcement, you know, that's a completely different other story, but the timing of this album and everything that's kind of covered on this track, you know, it kind of plays off of that just a little bit and the other thing that I want to stress is this album until I can actually get a physical CD copy in my hands which I will be doing so that lets you know how much I enjoyed this album I will be getting a physical copy just to see if there is any type of lyrics that I can read for each track because I gotta be honest here all the tracks with the exception of maybe two I could barely understand what D'Angelo was saying as compared to the other two albums. He sounded very distorted. He almost sounded like his voice just came like after the fact. It was mainly about the instruments, especially him on guitar. As we told you in the last piece, he's been spending all these years that... Uh, he's been playing around with music, working on his old material. He's been playing with the guitar a lot. And that is greatly, greatly felt throughout the journey of this album. But I could barely understand anything that he's saying. And some of you might say, well, Lee, maybe you're getting up there in age finally. Maybe your hearing is starting uh, to go out. On the contrary, my hearing is perfect. Um, you know, I listen to all different types of music, including heavy metal, uh, you name it. If it sounds good, I'm definitely on it. But this was actually one album where I, I couldn't help but kind of go, what exactly is he saying right here? Because all I could really do is just get into the groove uh, of the instrumentals that I was hearing. Now, let's talk about some of the key tracks. Well, actually, I'll go over all the tracks and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. I'll talk about uh, my favorite key tracks. Ain't That Easy. I thought that was a uh, really good opener. Um, it kind of came off like it was like a combination of nice guitar riffs, keyboard arrangements. Meanwhile, you got the lead vocals. It's just like buried in there. All right. So it's really just the riffs, the instrumental stuff, again, that you're really feeling off of this and as you're listening to this album and you know your music like that you can kind of tell throughout this journey he's borrowing elements from Al Green he's borrowing elements uh, from Sly Stone he's uh, borrowing elements if I haven't mentioned it already from Prince um, you can feel all that as you're going throughout this whole album and it could definitely be felt on the Ain't That Easy track that's followed up by A Thousand Deaths. Now, we've heard of this song before. Remember a couple of years back, there was like some bootleg D'Angelo stuff that came out and everybody was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. Now, we hear this song again, but it compared to when we first heard it on the bootleg uh, uh, unreleased official EP, whatever the heck it was that came out, um, I'll just call it bootleg. Compared to the actual studio version, completely different arrangements. Um, it is, oh, I love the way this track kicked off. I mean, we had got like about 15, 20 second uh, minute uh, promo that uh, sounded like it was coming from um, um, Malcolm X. And uh, he was basically giving a sermon uh, about how Jesus is black and all this and the drums on there is just very very heavy as far as D'Angelo's vocals once again it's very distorted um, but I mean this track it just really jumps at you when you hear those vocals that's coming in from uh, Malcolm X it really just reels you in and uh, a lot of drum very drum heavy uh, it kind of gave you a little bit, as you listen to that track, it kind of gave you a little bit of a Yeezus vibe from Kanye West. That's the best way I can uh, describe that one. The Charade, very psychedelic, very Prince-influenced is what I was able to hear uh, as I was listening to that. Y'all might want to check that out. 
Sugar Daddy. We talked about that track already, so I'm not gonna spend minutes talking about that track. If you all are curious what I have to say with regards to that particular track, just piggy on back. Uh, as uh, I talked about that track for like about maybe I think 10 minutes or whatever, while also talking about my joy that the new album's coming out. I think overall it was about maybe a 10 minute piece. You can check out the link down below in this episode description. Really Love, this is another one that we heard a couple of years back, which was a bootleg. Remember, we kept hearing Quest Love. Uh, he kept saying, you didn't hear this from me. And you're kind of like, oh, you know, I wish I could get into this because this song sounds really freaking uh, badass. But, you know, you keep hearing Quest Love every freaking 90 seconds or whatever. The bootleg compared to this, I love this studio version. I love the fact that when we heard it a couple of years back to now, D'Angelo went back in there and he just kept hammering it out, adding new arrangements to it. And it just sounds very Spanish influenced. I mean, you got the nice Hispanic lady in the background talking all seductive. You got the Spanish fly acoustic guitar that's coming in there. And uh, D'Angelo's vocals is still kind of plays off what we heard f from a couple of years back where he's just, you know, you're kind of like, what the hell is he saying? It sounds good, but what the hell is he saying? Can we get some, some lyrics or something? So, and those of you that's curious, what actually ha happened, uh, what actually ended up happening for me, I bought the album. Uh, no, actually, no, I'm going to buy the album later this week. I'm going to buy the CD version. A friend of mine uh, who had checked out what I had to say about the Sugar Daddy track, he actually ended up getting the album as soon as it was available on iTunes. And he was like, Lee, I could burn you a copy so as long as I know you're definitely gonna go buy the album. You are gonna talk about it though. And I was like, yeah, for sure, I'll talk about it. It's like, don't worry, you know, burn me a copy. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely buy a copy. I'll talk about it, I'll review it. So special shout out to you, man, you know who you are. Um, but yeah, that's why I don't know what's going on with the lyrics right now is because I don't have the lyric sheet, but I think those of us that have the album, y'all will definitely be in agreement. He's the man, but what the hell is he saying on every single track? Uh, but really love, I love that. I love that song. That for me, one of the most standout tracks on this album. It's a very nice kind of seductive, nice little tender ballad. You know, it can definitely, I'll say that's a nice little song you could maybe play and maybe you could fool around a little bit. You can't make no babies to it, but you could play around a little bit and then maybe say, come on, baby, let's take this upstairs. You know, you could maybe do something like that. Uh, Back in the Future, part one. Uh, that one uh, kind of came off very instrumental. You got some violin in there. You got a little bit of guitar. It's kind of got a nice little hip-hop beat uh, going to it. Uh, lyrically, once again, we don't really know what... Uh, actually, no, let me back up on that. This was actually the first track, as you're listening, because I think at this point, this is like track six that we're talking about now. Let me double-check. Yeah, this was actually the first clean track that you could actually understand what D'Angelo is saying. And uh, from what I was uh, kind of able to... Uh, to gather it, it kind of came off as if he was talking. Well, here's a little piece of a verse for you. So if you're wondering about the shape I'm in, I hope it ain't my abdomen you're referring to. So it kind of comes off like he's talking about some type of personal conflict that's happening within whether that be physically or emotionally or spiritually, but that's the kind of journey that you're going on as you listen to Back in the Future Part 1. Let's continue on. Till it's done. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, this sounds like more of a amped-up version of the charade. And uh, the lyrics in this one, you kind of understand what's going on. Uh, on this track as well you understand what D'Angelo is saying uh, on this particular track a uh, track it sounds like he's kind of addressing stuff that's happening with the climate change what's happening uh, socially around the world and everything and uh, 
You got the drums coming in there by Questlove. D'Angelo's on guitar and he's playing the organ, which, according to Questlove, uh, D'Angelo spent much of the last decade plus honing his skills as an axeman. And on this track, you really hear him trying to channel Prince again. As remember earlier, uh, we were talking about how he was channeling that uh, on the charade. And uh, honestly, throughout the whole album, he's really coming off channeling uh, Prince, but he's also channeling Sly Stone, uh, Al Green, just to name a few. Prayer, you listen to that, religious lyrics uh, throughout. You could definitely feel a little bit of Al Green on this uh, on this track a little bit. Good, that's a good song right there. Betray my heart. Let me look at that track number. Betray my heart. That is track nine. Uh, I actually love that track. That that track actually kicked ass. Very jazz influence. Those of you that are big jazz fans, you all will get a nice little groove out of that because you know how D'Angelo likes to flip the script he's either gonna come at you with that R&B I know he doesn't like being put in that category but ain't nothing wrong with also being put in the category of Neo so uh, you know how he likes to flip the script he's either gonna come at you with the R&B or he's gonna come at you with the Neo so you know he's gonna come at you with some nice old school funk uh, or he's gonna hit you up with a little bit of jazz and those of you that have that uh, live album he did it was like a live jazz album he did a couple of years back it finally had got officially released and so many people kept bootlegging the damn thing uh that whatever the record label was they decided to release an official version check that out if you are hearing that for the first time you won't be disappointed with that live jazz album but yeah betray my heart very jazz influence really love that i love the tempo of that and when i look at all the tracks on this album this track definitely stands out the most for not only being so damn good nice good groove track but it was probably one of the longest tracks out of the entire album it was almost pushing six minutes with the door i love the transition that we go from uh from the heavy jazz influence betray my heart to with the door as it goes to like a, a blues acoustic uh, type of mode and uh, that one definitely is uh, very good it's uh, got some whistling in there uh, you guys got to check that one out that one's kind of nice some of the lyrics I could understand from that one kind of sounded like D'Angelo was trying to encourage a woman to not leave him or whatever like that sounds like maybe there's some type of a relationship problem there's some type of a conflict that's going on between him and this woman it's a nice little track right there then once again we have a remix back to the future part two kind of gives you shades of what had happened after um africa on uh, d'angelo's voodoo album had went off and then like a few seconds went past and then you heard like I think it was like 20 seconds of a remix of like everything that you've just been hearing over the past two albums. It was kind of like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, that's basically how Back to the Future 2 had came about. And the final track, my most favorite track of all, Another Life. Uh, this was the second longest track out of the entire album. Um, actually, correction, third. Third uh longest track out of the album as everything that is just R&B and just soul I mean good freaking soul is just all embodied in this one track and I mean it just comes off so soulful and when you listen to it it almost just kind of comes off as if D'Angelo is paying homage to like his old roots, like how he first started. Remember, guys, those of you that are hardcore D'Angelo fans, you know how he first started off uh, with a gospel band. I can't remember the name right now. Somebody's probably going to be nice enough to remind me in the comment section, and I appreciate that, as well as everybody else that's like, what was the gospel band? But it, it really kind of comes off like he was trying to go back to his roots and kind of pay homage to that a little bit i mean vocally again i i couldn't really understand some of the things uh that he was saying but 
I mean, th this track right here, I mean, it just is a great conclusion uh, to this entire journey uh, of this album. And uh, it's just got a nice, good feel to it, man. I mean, that's just one of those tracks of all the tracks. That's the one track you're like, you're going to crank up and you're just going to be like, wow. The 14-year wait, it just feels like everything has just been capped into that one particular track and i loved it i loved it tremendously uh, so again the key tracks in my mind that i felt were very strong for this album um for sure another life betray my heart really love sugar daddy a thousand deaths ain't that easy i, I thought at least half the album um actually i i enjoyed the entire journey uh of the album if i were to only find like one complaint say it with me it's the vocals i just really cannot understand what was going on i thought maybe this album might have been done digitally or something like that because that seems to be the trend nowadays and on the contrary no they went old school when they had recorded this so you're kind of like wow uh, another disappointment only 56 minutes just about for this entire album i know i know you're like wow 14 years and that's all we get it's like barely under an hour come on d where's some more music i'm hoping that we won't have to wait as long for another album i hope that d gets right out there and whatever more material he has you know, he puts it out there within the next two to three years. I know he's getting ready to go on tour to support this new album uh, in the coming year. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, man, this album to me, it just really, really comes off like a a rhythm slash beat album. You know, just a rhythm slash beat instrumental album. And for me, there's nothing wrong with that because I actually love a, a really good rhythm and beat album i love pushing instrumental albums and all that those of you that's really looking to connect very well with the lyrics of what the angel is saying you're going to have a hard time understanding what he's saying until you can get those lyric sheets that's hopefully uh in the um in the book album in the jewel case and all that and once i buy my cd a copy of this album i'll actually come back here and put a little annotation to let you know if there's lyrics in it or not so that you know maybe you can kind of connect more to the songs for those of you that's going to be checking this out but out of a scale of one to ten i would have to give this album a respected s i'm gonna say seven out of ten i wish i could give it higher i'm probably being generous uh, to some of you guys, but a 7 out of 10. I definitely felt that this was its own unique, powerful album in its own way, but when I can't understand what's being said by the vocalists, that's where I have a really big gripe, you know, and I hope uh, that, you know, maybe in months to come, this album may be remixed again, where we will understand what he's saying, or maybe the next album going forward, they'll definitely learn from what happened here and make sure that lyrically we know exactly what D is saying. But I thought everybody did a good job on this album. This album was mainly produced by D'Angelo. He did have some help writing-wise for Q-Tip. Uh, Questlove definitely had stepped in and helped him as a uh, uncredited uh, producer. Uh, and uh, he definitely had served as a drummer and all that for a majority of this track so but yeah definitely check this out what did you guys think about the album go ahead post your comments down below let me know what you all have to say and we will definitely follow up on a special edition of the rcwr show our radio edition once we get enough comments from you guys did this album live up to your expectations or were you disappointed were you looking for him to hit another home run just like with brown sugar voodoo or did you feel he did this album justice i don't think we all need to really you know those of us that re really weren't feeling the album i don't think it's in our place to bash this guy this is only his third album he's 40 years of age he has plenty of time to put out more albums Without an argue, without any uh, uh, argument from me, I definitely feel that between Brown Sugar, Voodoo, 
great body of work that he put right there. This, unfortunately, is one of those albums that can't be compared to those albums because it's an entirely different class of its own. It's handling a unique approach, a unique concept, and all that. So we have to judge this album as it is without comparing it to the other two albums. So hopefully a majority of you can kind of keep that in mind when you get ready to share your feedback on this album. And hey, if it's your first time checking us out, I'd love to have you subscribe to us so you never miss out on all the great content we do for you here on a weekly basis, whether it's doing reviews like what we're doing right now, it could be music, it could be movies, it could be TV, whatever. Or we're kicking back, having some really fun and insightful interviews. We do have some interviews that you want to check out. Special shout out to you guys that are into wrestling. We do cover that. We cover a little bit of everything here on our YouTube channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, those of you that's going to be checking out the audio version of this, you can head on over to YouTube.com forward slash the rcwr show to make sure you subscribe to us so you never miss out on all the weekly content we do for you here on a weekly basis i really hope that you appreciated this in-depth review for this album and hopefully it made up your mind on whether or not you want to check out this album you want to buy it if not at least go scoop up the key tracks that i was talking about listen to them and maybe that can make you figure out if it's something you want to check out or not all right but make sure you give this a like share it a number of ways by facebooking it google plusing it retweeting it as always it's one of the many ways you can spread a good word about our content until next go round, please be safe and most importantly be kind to one another we will see you next go round, everybody do take care